at the crap, the crap, the crap. It's Beaver Kool-Aid. Beaver Kool-Aid. John Lyle, L.A. Lloyd, and Drew Bennett. Beaver Kool-Aid. Three dudes talking about whatever the hell they want. It's narcissistic. Check it, check it, check it. Check it out. Remember, there's nothing wrong with being self-absorbed. It's Beaver Kool-Aid with Lyle, L.A. Lloyd, and Drew. I wanted to start off the show today talking, uh, maybe I could get some some dog advice. We haven't talked much about dogs. You know, I know Drew's a new father to a baby, but I'm kind of a new father to a dog here. And I'm learning things uh, about dogs, especially female dogs that I didn't didn't know about. Yesterday, I came home um, from joining the, the daughter there at school for a year in party. And there's these two drops of blood on the floor by the door. And I'm looking, make sure I didn't cut myself, looked at the dog, didn't see any cuts anywhere, cleaned up the blood, sat there for the rest of the afternoon trying to figure out what, where the blood was from. Told my wife about it. She's like, well, Melly's probably in heat. And I was like, what do you mean? I, so I had no idea that dogs had menstrual cycles while they're in heat, as this was a first for me. So is this common knowledge and something I just missed along the, the lines of I can't believe you, you got that dog in from. Uh, didn't you get that dog from a shelter or no? Yeah, well, it's it's a couple had it, but they weren't they were okay. old and couldn't so that take dog's care not of it. Fixed dog's not fixed because we just went through the heartworm thing. We wanted to get through that, and then we were going to get her spayed after uh, yeah, she okay. finished up the heartworm well, thing. No, let's say it the right way, Lloyd. It's spaded. Spaded. You, you have to get her spaded. Yeah, spaded. But uh, yeah, that's exactly. It. Of course, they do, man. It's a mammal. All right. It's a mammal. We all kind of function the same way. You know, we're, we're mammals. So that's exactly what you saw there, pal. Did wow. it freak you out? Totally freaked me out. Because, I mean, I was like, well, where is this blood coming from? I thought she'd like, uh, it was from her nose or something. And which really scared me after the heartworm thing. I was like, oh, God, what if she's bleeding from the mouth or the nose? My dog's dying. And, you know, then I come to find out my wife goes, it's, it's a menstrual cycle. Dogs, you know, do that. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay, well... Did Am I she supposed spell, to put a tampon in it or anything? Or she's like, she no, spell, dumbass. Uh, does she spell red rum in it with it? Little, <laughs> yeah. On the floor? It's a greeny, it's a greeny tampon. Yeah. So that's uh, so the whole idea is that way it doesn't smell. Yeah. You know, you kind of keeps the dog's uh, coo fresh. Well, I felt a little better. So uh, I, I'm thinking maybe she's not as old as we had thought she was. Because, I mean, when, when the dogs are unable to have babies, what, six years old maybe, I guess? Or, or, or puppies? Unless you live in a trailer park, <laughs> yeah, a trailer park, I think that uh, they can have <laughs> up to about eight or the nine. Day they die, yeah, yeah. you know. I mean, that's you see them all the time. They get that sway back, and they have all those teats dragging on the uh, dirt road, and uh, yeah, and then you should see the dogs, man. Down. They look even worse. <laughs> yeah, I know because they're all mutant dogs. You got like a weenie dog with a German Shepherd head. But no matter what kind of strange look they have, they're all black. They're yeah. always black. I feel for black dogs. You go to the shelter, yeah. it's full of black dogs everywhere. And, you know, and people, and, you know, I feel for the black dog. He's at a disadvantage. Once again, kind of like the black man, you know, the same thing. You, know, you go to the shelter and you feel like they ought to say, okay, tell you what, you take a black dog, we're going to give you a hundred bucks. We're going to give you a hundred bucks for taking the black dog just to help us out here. Well, all the kids go in well, and they don't say, oh, what a lovely black puppy. At least they have a theme song from Led Zeppelin, though, so they should all feel happy, you know? Yeah, well, that's true. A black Labrador is the least likely to be adopted at a shelter. That's true. Wow. Yeah. I mean, black dog. Where'd you get that from, uh, Drew, by the way? He is uh, so like always looking at the factoids. Have you know <laughs> He's like he's a walking uh, dictionary. He's a walking know, Wikipedia. He just gives you stuff like that. Yeah. You know that the... <laughs> 74.9% of black labs or lab mixes are the, the least likely to be adopted from shelters. Yeah. I, heard, I heard it on the news. I heard it on the news. And you remember that. Well, it's true because if you work around shelters a lot or you're around shelters a lot, you'll see it, man. The black, the black inmates. It's just like our prisons. There's a disproportionate amount of black men in prison compared to the, the overall population. Same deal at the shelters. You go there and you, there's a disp- disproportionate amount of black dogs. I don't know what it is, man. And I wonder what the uh, percentage of North Carolina hicks that didn't realize dogs had a menstrual cycle when they're in heat is there, Drew. Can you yeah, whip that out for me? Raise your hand when you say North Carolina hicks. You have to do that. So, right. 
there you go. They didn't realize that mammals are mammals. You know, because you're still looking and you're thinking, they what, they lay eggs? Well, now I'm starting to think about an elephant uh, menstrual cycle. Good God. I mean, I've seen the size of their turd, so I can imagine how much they must uh, pop out there when, it's, when it's time. I can't believe this only had a couple of drops, but that's... Uh, yeah. I hope it didn't, uh, you know, damage the uh, the polar bear skin you got there in the master bedroom. I think the house cleaners are coming to take care of it here in a little They're bit. So. Polar bear. It is pelt. Friday, you know. I keep looking out the window to see when they're going to drive up so I can shut the doors behind me so I don't have to be made I think fun that, of. I think, the, I think your your housekeepers ought to be the next guest on Beaver, Beaver Cooler. <laughs> going. I just love, you know, the fact that you can be, you know, a, a, an aging gentleman and you keep learning stuff. Isn't that great about life? It is great. You always you know, learn you something. You can always learn something that but you didn't know that. One I mean, thing it did, think? it lead, led into, though, I will say is like, you know, I begged her again. Can we get one animal in this house that has nuts or at least used to have some, you know, because it's just good yeah. God. I'm just surrounded by so much Only estrogen and feet. Believe. Yeah. yeah, wait till they get a little older and everybody's uh, menstruating and they're oh. all, you know, their cycles sink. You're yeah. going to have a good time, Lloyd. I don't have that problem. I just have a wife and I got a son and uh, three male animals. Jeez. Even, yeah, even I, our uh, cockatiel's a female. I mean, there's just nothing in here with by balls, the way, you're, including you're, you're, myself now. By the way, your bird ain't bleeding, Lloyd. Oh, that's just good. in case you want to know about that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. If she does, Lloyd's I'll just start... still learning about all these things, man. You, should we go and play doctor someplace so we can uh, figure out all the equipment? <laughs> you would think after two kids, I would know this, but I didn't know right. dogs had them. In, hey, I in dare you when your housekeeper comes over to to to, to start jacking off with your door open. Oh God! <laughs> Come on, man. No, you're the lord of the manor. Come on, man. She would just, just go. See if you can... Oh, stop that. Yeah, and just see I'm if reading, they're safe. I'm reading Gay's Anatomy. <laughs> yeah. And, and why are you talking to two guys on your video about. screen? Now, what she's yeah, thinking is, crazy. I'm talking to two guys in here on the video screen. That's probably what she's getting worried about. I was like, who in the hell is this guy talking to? You got your to? pants off. You got your, your legs spread. And your feet are up on your desk. And you got Gray's Anatomy there. And you got a mirror. A yeah. mirror trying to figure out where everything is. <laughs> I just right. realized my just asshole see, looks like a pink spider. Holy shit. Right. And, just see if, and you're probing your rectum with a Sharpie and just see whether or not your your housekeeping people just and just see if they come in and kind of dust up and clean around and they don't do anything. And there you are, man. I and tell her, take that play. dust buster and start tickling my balls a little bit while she's in there doing that. You know? right, right. And you're trying to play a harmonica with your asshole. I, I think that would be great, man. That would be that would be super. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Whoa. And the thing is, you put your mouth on it, Lloyd. Oh. That's ATM, right? Woo. Yeah. He looks uh, up at her. He looks up at her with a sweaty face, all freaked out. Right. Tells her that the check's on the credenza. Oh, oh man, that that that, that harmonica, man, that's just awful, gross. That's good stuff. See, sometimes you just you think you're playing around, and you find out you 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 really you just had vision. You, you're clairvoyant. You just had this vision into what really goes on. <laughs> wow. So come see uh, Uncle Johnny. I'm 101 percent accurate. <laughs> you are, man. You know, I can tell you about your past, your present, and then your future. Unbelievable. But I can also tell you if you're in Lloyd's house, do not put that harmonica in your mouth. All right. Hey, hey there's hey. a pleader. Hey, check this out. <laughs> How did we go from dogs to jerking off in front of your maid? <laughs> well, I guess he had brought up housekeeper, and I was just thinking, wouldn't it be great if we're doing the show? And there he's just, you know. Yeah. And see if they skip a beat or not. That's that's fun. <laughs> the funny thing is, is she has a little purple, uh, little purple <laughs> diaper on back there, a little little covering because you know she was. Kathy brought one of those home, so I was like, well, if that dog couldn't be any more embarrassed, she is now for sure walking around with a little purple panty on her ass right now with her tail yeah. sticking through it. So yeah, I yeah. didn't realize they made per a Well, look at that. Something else on you. Hey, look at that. They have uh, coverings for dogs when they're bleeding in heat. So I, I learned I a lot yesterday. Once in my life, and I think it was my first dog as a child, had a dog that wasn't fixed. I mean, it's always, you know, that's always number one. Yeah. Well, she At least, will be. I don't care if it's male, female, whatever. You know, I'm not. I'm not into breeding. Yeah, me either. And I don't need any more dogs. So <clears throat> that's next on the agenda after uh, after heat. 
is uh, no, yeah, yeah, because that's okay. I mean, but the, you know, you blood on the tile. Yeah, it was on the tile. And there was a couple of spots in here in the studio on the carpet, too, that I had to clean up. So. You, ought to just, you ought to just do that and drip it so it, it comes <laughs> and it stops right at your chair. Yeah. <laughs> and then you kick back for the housekeeper. Uh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's pretty cool, though, to finally be in a house where there's a woman in heat, right? Yeah, Boy. good God. It's been a while. <laughs> been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah that's a good feeling man i might have to go in and go by the shelter myself you know <laughs> <laughs> it's beaver kool-aid beaver kool-aid so listen tenacious d when you go to their concerts instead of t-shirts they're selling cum racks nice and uh, uh, I'll I'll uh, pop the link up for you here, so you can uh, check it Are you out. Can you use another verb? You're gonna pop it up. Is that what you're gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> pop up this link. For pop you. up video with right uh, of uh, so we can find out about their yeah whatever they call it. Yeah, that's what yeah. it is. It's uh, it, it's basically a rag, and it says uh, it says tenacious D official cum rag. All right. It's yeah, got a unicorn nothing. on it. So I take it's it they, uni- have, they don't has, have much of a female audience. It has a unicorn. Say, and then you, yeah, and, and nothing uh, is more sexy than Jack Black. So you're thinking, you know, <laughs> well, then again, you know, if you adopt a, a male dog, then you can Jack Black. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a rainbow and a unicorn on it, and it says everything else is just a cum rag. <laughs> well, all right. Are you, uh, yeah, all right. Yeah. It's 15... It's fifteen dollars. He was on a uh, radio show the other day uh, promoting that movie Bernie. He had, and they asked him, you know, this the typical question: "What do you like more, acting or singing?" And of course, he said, "Well, I wouldn't have a music career without my acting career, and I wouldn't have an acting career if it went for my music career." So I don't, I don't remember which came first. I remember seeing some HBO special on Tenacious D. So I guess the acting thing came first to promote their music. So yeah, you you can go back pretty far for Jack Black. Uh, yeah. he, he, I think his first movie might have been in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hey, man, he's selling cum racks. God bless him. We all need more merch because the Lord knows they ain't making any money selling records these days. So are you guys are Tenacious D fans? Uh, I, uh, just going back to what Drew said, I found uh, some of those uh, HBO shorts uh, hilarious. And then when it started getting serious, I started, mm, didn't really think too much about it. I, I'm not a big fan of their music. But I did like that, uh, that little bit that they did way back when on HBO. But, and I think Jack Black's a good actor. I think he's funny. I mean, I've seen him in person a couple of times. I thought he was kind of an asshole, but lately, every video or interview I've seen him, he's been really nice. So maybe he's uh, more humble now. I don't know. But he, there were some times he was a prick. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I've seen him just in person. He was not very nice to some That's people. wild because he's always been really nice to Drew. Well, the only thing, the only, <laughs> and, well, I, and, you know, I, I kind of get why he was pissed off because uh, some radio station had asked me to go meet him over at uh, the Driscoll to get a couple of IDs for the radio station. So it oh, was set boy. up through the label to for me to go over there and get record some drops for this radio station. And somebody walked up to him and asked him to sign a guitar or something like that. And he just jumped down their ass. It was and I think it was kind of like a young person, maybe not not a a child, but maybe 13, 14. He's like, I don't sign that shit, man, because you'll take and sell it on eBay. No, get it out of my face. And he was kind of a prick to himself. But maybe that was a one-time instance. I don't know. But Maybe he knew the guy. Maybe I don't know. Maybe those guys, uh, and, and I get up. these movie stars and rock stars. I'd probably get to a point that if people were making money off my signature, I'd be a little pissed about that, too. So, you know. Really? Yeah. I would. Uh, I would. His, his, first, uh, his first appearance... Um, on anything was the Fall Guy in 1984. Wow. Well, he must I, be older I, than I thought he was. Now. I know this is like because I know this is not a factoid that you could just reel off there. I well, know. I know. I'm, I'm, Here, I'm looking at it. I, it's I, a, okay. The fall, and then he was in he was in a TV movie called Our Shining Moment, and uh, and then it, it, it moves on. I I think he I don't think he ended up doing anything serious other than TV series and and TV episodes until you know maybe later on when he was. You know, doing some stuff with Tenacious D. What he said in the interview was the first acting role he ever got was when he was 13, and he was in, believe it or not, an Atari commercial. 
So he's older than I thought he was. I didn't realize he was that old. But anyway, he said his first gig was 13 years old, Atari TV commercial. Well, I'll tell you, Kyle Gass, his partner, I've met that guy and he's a real nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. And he's and he's always <laughs> he's always ever been nice to me. So, yeah, yeah. Always been nice to Drew. Yeah. Right. It's, just, it's, it's like everybody Drew meets. They, they love him. He's well, yes, he's nice a likable man. guy, man. <laughs> yeah. And then, in fact, know. if you get one of those tenacious D cum rags and uh, make sure I have it handy next time I see you. So uh, I think there's plenty of people that would disagree with you on the likability factor of Kyle <laughs> of me. No, of oh, of Drew. <laughs> oh, of yeah. Drew. Yeah. 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 <laughs> of Drew. <laughs> hey, man, you got a lot of fans. Yeah. What is this now? Is this the watering break? I noticed you guys doing it, so I feel like I have Go to Go ahead, grab it. one, man. So uh, American Idol is history. I know uh, Lyle doesn't care, but uh, Philip Phillips from Georgia wins it all. And uh, I heard that this guy had eight different surgeries because he's got kidney problems while this competition was going on. So I, I kind of felt like uh, he was the man. I, I'm glad he got it, man. After hearing that, a guy gets through a competition and eight surgeries. And uh, what kind of surgery? What surgery? For his kidneys, he's got kid, chronic kidney problems. But is that why he won because of the kidney stuff? It could be. I don't know. No, I, I, this guy was never in the bottom I three. I, I, listen, he was I'm never not in the bottom three. Against him, I just I never saw the. I never saw the show. He reminds so me, he literally reminds me of a cross between Eddie Vedder solo with his, you know, more ballad stuff and Dave Matthews. And he mm -hmm. does have radio friendly songs. I mean, I, instead of the trying to copy Beyonce or all these divas that sing like the other girl did, I, I think he actually is, uh, you know, he's marketable. I think he's got a look. I mean, he's got a good sound. And uh, I mean, I would pay to go see this guy in concert because I, I think he's got a good sound, man. It's the first time on American Idol that I felt like someone was actually believable. And if he can write some songs, he's got a good career ahead of him, I think. Listen to you, man. You sound like a wow. promoter. Yeah, yeah, yeah I really. I learned from Jimmy Iovine, the best of you them. And, uh, you and Seacrest uh, yeah. have, a, have a, got a little deal going on or something? Lloyd out. What's going on, man? Lloyd Maybe out. that's what you need to do, man. You need to go out and find the talent, groom them. Maybe that's your new gig. Yeah. Right? Well, and I can out. see the small talk. Hey, man, do you know that dogs, female dogs, if they ain't fixed, they bleed? <laughs> I feel like the most naive fucking guy in the America right now, in but the world. That's okay, man. You know who won American Idol. I do so know that's, that. That's see? the important stuff. That's see? good, man. Tells you what right. <laughs> I am mainstream America right here. What You're you looking at the, the poster name? boy, Philip Phillips. What Phillip did you Phillips. say? John Johnson. What is his name? I mean, <laughs> yeah, Lloyd St. John Lloyd, Johnson. Sam Samuels. What was the guy's name? I mean, Jeez. poor guy. It's Beaver Kool Aid. Beaver Kool Aid. Yeah, I just uh, I got to tell you guys, I am just so worried about uh, the, the the you know rock and roll these days, and I know we've touched on it here and there but i really am i mean i am just so you know i know lloyd you deal with all these different acts you know because you got your countdown show this is a good time for you to promote your countdown show thank Go you ahead. uh the la lloyd rock countdown la lloyd.com check it out okay so uh but i i just you know i i don't know what's what the hell's going on with this with this uh you know it's been a long time now you always think it's cyclical and then you know some you know, like a new movement will break out and will get a little bit better, you know, when it gets bad. But, you know, like grunge after the hair bands or something. I mean, you know, a little bit of change. But this stuff where I was, I don't know, I was in a bar listening to something yesterday and I thought, good God, man, does everything have to sound the exact same? Yeah. This highly compressed, loud, same old crap. I mean, you can't tell one band from the other. And uh, rock is just dying dude i mean i look at all these stations across the country and that that aren't doing well that play rock music and and they've been around for a long time and they're very few i'm gonna tell you the damn things on life support there's one I'll in your you, in your you backyard why. i'll tell you why there's not a uh they're not playing the right kind of rock music that's what the deal is well wait, because, so there's there's a right kind out there but they're, they're not getting yeah. touched yeah man you know, there's lots of rock bands out that aren't that aren't getting any airplay. And, you know, there's some big ones, but even the big ones aren't getting played as much as they should. For instance, the Black Keys are a pretty fantastic rock band that don't get played by rock radio. 
Yeah, they get played on alternative, but not rock like you're talking. Well, see, that's what I mean. Rock. This, you know, this crap of saying, "Oh, okay, that's going to be alternative," or something's going to be triple A, or yep. whatever. Rock is has gotten so narrow in the focus when they say rock that that you know the genre needs to be wide open. Yeah. That's when you look at all this top forty stuff. You know, they're playing the you know a lot of things swing that way, mm-hmm. crossover. Whereas rock is so freaking narrow. It's not like the days where I'm playing everything from Judas Priest to Toto. <laughs> You know, which is true. I mean, I, you know, on the same stage, play, I'd play everything from, you know, you name it. I mean, Iron Maiden, and it'd be, uh, hell, I don't know. Well, this just, this just came out this week, and this is kind of industry talk, but essentially there's about uh, 75 rock stations in bigger markets, you know, from New York all the way down to some of the smaller and medium markets that report to this uh, thing called Media Base, and it basically tracks what their, their spins and their plays are. And the new criteria now to be a mainstream rock station is you have to play 5% currents in your playlist. And to be an active rock, which is more aggressive, kind of like what Kiss used to be, you only have to play 10% currents to be considered a reporter for this, uh, this service now. So- I think maybe, maybe some people don't know what currents means. That means, well, it's, yeah. that means brand new songs. Right, right. Well, yeah. well, and recurrence. Yeah, we, say, we say brand new doing that, you know, that little... Brand new. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. But yeah, something brand everybody, new. Everyone watching or listening to this knows how radio burns everything out. So, yeah. Right. But that's, so that's, that's just so that a means if, As long as I play a couple of Red Hot Chili Pepper songs, I'm in, right? You're in. You're in. You're, you're definitely okay. good to go. And, and so, I mean, if, if people start talking, well, I had a number one song on the active rock chart, well, what does that mean? Because uh, only 10% of uh, their playlist has to be current. So, I mean, there's, there's, as Drew said, there's a lot of music that doesn't have to necessarily be played from new bands to still be considered an active rock radio station in the U.S. now. So. so you're talking about so all these people that uh, run radio stations who aren't broadcasters that are salespeople. Yeah. They look for some other, the guru at yeah. corporate headquarters to tell them what to do. They're way off because there is all this stuff that can be played. Right. It's just not being played. I mean, everybody has the production of Nickelback. Everybody has this kind of stuff where it's loud, compressed. They've you know, become complacent radio, in all but. of that. They've, be, they've become complacent in all of those artists, okay? So all of the Nickelbacks and the Godsmacks and all of those, and the Puddle of Mud and, and all of that that we've been dealing with the for the last bitches. Yeah, the 10 yeah. or 15 years, okay? All of those bands, that's been compla- they, they've become complacent in rock radio, and that's the deal. And there's all sorts of bands that are bubbling under that are getting played at indie rock radio stations and an alternative. Bands like the Shins and the Black Keys – that's really rock music. You can put those bands in between the the uh, you know the the Golden Child, which is the Foo Fighters right now for rock radio. All of those all of those artists can play together. Right now, I think they try to call it alternative music, but that's really rock music. Yeah, yeah. they're just, yeah, they're just not, they're not playing. So it's such an antiquated term, too. You know, oh, it's alternative. And I have to tell you another reason that everybody sounds the same. Literally. And I know this from every band that I interview on the Rock Countdown is there's literally two producers out there. There's this guy named Johnny K in Chicago who started, I guess his claim to fame was Disturbed. And if you listen to Disturbed, much as I love John Moore, he'll be the first to tell you that they, they sound very similar in all the production. And then... John Moyer will be on the show next week. Thanks a lot for slamming one of our guests coming up, Drew. That's, by the way, Drew Bennett is a professional musician. You know, he, so. I, I think I just found the one guy that doesn't like you, John Moyer from Disturbed. So. No, man, oh, John Moyer's great. He's going to be I'm not he's gonna love this. Drew. Don't slam yeah. our guests before they come on, you prick. How did I slam the guest? All I was well, saying. You know how this. But you gotta, you're gonna find out that no matter what Drew says to John Moyer, you know John's gonna like Drew. Oh yeah, because everybody does. Well, that's true. So and, I, and then the, 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 I can't believe that you're saying that I slammed that band. <laughs> I'm just saying that's one of the lyrics in their songs, isn't it? I'm not saying it's a bad band. <laughs> <I've seen laughs> <disturbing. laughs> and, and the other and the other guys, Howard Benson, and then so you got Johnny K from Chicago, Howard Benson. Literally, I swear this guy produces everybody everyone that goes through his studios and then you may have heard this name the the lord algies the chris lord algies that yeah, that mix yeah. everything so you got yeah. literally three people that's kind of controlling the sound of rock right now at least from a production standpoint good god it's like everything else in the world huh all this consolidation yeah imagine that 
Right, right. So yeah, I, I want to go. Like, I, I need to go and hang out, like in the you know some small uh, Caribbean island, and record with some people. You yeah. know, I want to do that thing. I want it to. You know, like the old days, you know, like uh, I can remember when my band put together this this album called Tusk and uh, or whatever the hell that album. What was it? Tusk. When was you used to be in, when you used to be in Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in Fleetwood. That was a, that was my dad. That was, you know, I was a young guy. I was a prodigy. Yeah. But yeah. 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 You know, I, 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 I know you talk about the state of rock is is bad now, but I will have to say one thing. I do like Fleetwood Mac. But the thing that drove me crazy about that band is when Mick Fleetwood would get on his fucking drum solo. And not only would he get back there and play everything that would make a sound that you could hit with a stick, he has to come from behind the fucking drums with uh, some bongos to the front of the stage and go for another 15 minutes. I was like, dude, really? I know the name Mick Fleetwood and everything, but seriously, do we really need that? I mean, you know, I don't even well, like a guitar solo that much. But. I can't, you, can't you're bringing you just a recollection be the drummer? of a Fleetwood Mac show to Beaver Kool-Aid. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that is yeah, something. You know, it's too bad we can't play landslides, just haven't paid, paid uh, the RIAA, you know? You mean the Smashing Pumpkins one? version? Uh, no. Which version? No. Fleetwood right. Mac version? Not, not, not uh, Billy Corgan singing landslide. I just want to no, be thanks. able to go someplace like Zimbabwe and, uh, you know, spend $8 million laying down drum tracks. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Zeppelin back in the days used to go to Morocco. I mean, what was so, what was so special about Morocco, you know? Well, you got to get the right sound, dude. Yeah. You got to be in the you know the right environment. That's what I loved it. You guys would go all over and uh, record in different places, and you know, mm. you hear about it. You anticipate you know, what's going to go with the Stones would record in all these different places. That was neat. Now, according to you, they all hang out with Jelly Bean Benitez someplace. <laughs> you know, he's and they're just waiting in <laughs> Jelly line. Bean, their, Jelly Bean Benitez, absolutely. Jelly yeah, Bean. they're all waiting for their number to be called next. Next. So I could come in and record. Well, here's the reason I brought up Morocco. I get this text yesterday from Amy Lee at Ev of Evanescence. It says, we've fallen in love with the exotic beauty, culture, and lovely people of Morocco. Thank you for an unforgettable time. I know we'll meet again. So what is that? What is it about Morocco, man? Is it, uh, is she trying were to they re playing a, Were they playing a private birthday party? Could be. You know. They were there. Could you be. know what? I, I would reply to that text with a uh, big fuck you. <laughs> There you go. That's the Drew Bitter. You're, you're, you're not an Amy Lee from Evanescence fan, man? I like I her. I just think she, what is she, rubbing it in? She's yeah, in Morocco and you're yeah. in Austin, Texas? I'm here unemployed yeah. sitting in my studio with a dog in heat. Well, so. How do you know it's not Morocco, <laughs> Indiana, dude? <laughs> yeah, it could be Morocco, a, Indiana. She's, she's text messaging you and saying, thank you, Morocco. I would reply and say, well, fuck you, Amy. Yeah. Yeah, well, I just thought... <laughs> What about the fact that Lloyd was name dropping any of Hey, you got to yeah. do it, man. Come on. Yeah, you got to right. do that. You know, yeah. look. I don't I text. I get some kind of advertisement. Look at this guy. So I got a text from Amy Lee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, when you're yeah, unemployed yeah. and you're not <laughs> making any money, you got you got to do something to feel good about yourself. You got to look at the positives in the world, you know, because, man, it sucks. It sucks not having a job. It's I played polo with <laughs> Nickelback the other day. No, I went ice skating in his basement, he, you know, and doing that. So <laughs> he's got a full go. full on skating rink in his fucking basement. That's how much money Nickelback's made. So, yeah. Hey man, don't don't diss them, man. If they're making money in rock, God bless them. I I'm not pissed. No, I get to still diss them. No, no, I'm gonna diss Nickelback, man. <laughs> yeah, good. I, See, I had Chad Kruger coming on the show. Now you you've already dissed John. He's coming on next week. You, you dissed his band, and now you're dissing Nickelback. So no, Chad Kruger's gonna come on. So you know, I, I just uh, you know, I mean, I, I I cringe every time I had to play Nickelback. God, I hate that stuff. <laughs> I, I don't understand I mean, I why you guys that. hate Nickelback. Nickelback Everything is that has that kind of that kind of sound. I hate. He's just figured yes. out yes. how to sell I, records I, and I, how to get on the radio. What's wrong with that? That's what every band wants. They want to get their records uh, played on the radio and they want to sell albums. They want people to come out to the show. They're, they're fucking managed by Live Nation for God's sake. So what what's wrong with being successful? You know, do you want to sit in your garage and play to your well, fucking no, neighbors I mean, all the time? You can be successful if you want, but I, I'm not going to listen to your crap. Yeah. It's, I hate, douche, I hate that it's sound. douche rock man thank you douche yeah there's a new format i think i think that's, <laughs> that's the reason why one. because you got douchebags that are that are running these stations and they're all playing douche rock I... and they don't know anything and you got some guys that 
talk about a journey show they saw back in the eighties. <laughs> it's, it's like a highlight of their life. So you're you know, comparing Journey to Nickelback is what you're saying. And so well, no, I'm talking about you got some suit saying I never forget, man, when I when I when I was in Atlanta and they went into Who's Crying Now and I the <laughs> tears were streaming down my face because it was just so emotional for me. And that's Where like the their big moment in rock. Go down in the city. Listen, guys, go on YouTube and search for the Nickelback <laughs> songs played together. Oh, I've okay? seen that. Oh, I know. God. It's good. Well, look, I, I'm not going to say it's not Formula Rock, and I don't even know why I'm here defending Nickelback. I, I will say, I know, right? Every oh, time, man, the every shit time, you're catch for this one is let me tell you. Oh, I know, I know, I'm going to get hate mail for this, but yeah, let me it's tell like you something. Attorney for the mass murder. Every for, for time, time, every time I've been around that man, and especially Chad, he has been overly gracious i mean from the time they didn't sell one record to the time they're selling out arenas this guy has been always totally cool Look, to me. we're not talking about a guy that goes and gives you the secret handshake dude we're just talking about a sound we hate i know douche rock i know douche, douche rock, rock. Give me some yeah, I, I always that. wanted to do that, you know. I, mean, yeah, everybody wanted, I wanted to call like oldies dinosaurs so it'd be like you know 99.5 kiss <laughs> dinosaur and then you play the song they go no 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 because then people are going to think it's old yeah <laughs> i go well it is it's freaking 30 <laughs> years old don't if you tell them it's if you don't tell them it's old they won't know it's old black sabbath was released in the 60s okay they're playing that yeah, they're so playing you, hendrix now i mean they've so they're, you go to the 995 kiss <laughs> dinosaur and you hear <laughs> <laughs> You know, and then, then you know, and people are going to say, wait a minute, Sweet Leaf is an old song? Are you kidding me? I didn't know that. <laughs> so instead of having fun with it, I'd love to have that thing like douche rock. And yeah. every time there's this, you know, this stupid, highly compressed piece of crap, I like it. Douche I think rock. I've come up with a new uh, idea for a new syndicated show. Call it douche rock and play all the douche bands rock. you guys I, that think are douche bands. Well, you know? I got to tell you, a lot of that stuff on the L.A. Lloyd's Rock 30. Is <laughs> yeah, you already rock. have a show. <laughs> coming up next on uh, coming up next on Beaver Kool Aid, Lloyd's hooked us up with the Darius Rucker interview. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. That is well, he's a nice guy. We're not here. It's not a popularity contest. Hey, you We're know what? He's always been sound. really nice to me. Yeah, he's been really nice to me, so I'm going to forget the fact that I hate everything he does. You I don't hate their me? music. I don't hate all like their music. Groupie. It looks You're a some groupie, of it, man. I'm it's not like, a groupie. Like, I'll pretend I'll feign friendship because I'm waiting until uh, three in the I'm morning not. when you break out the cocaine. No, so just, no, no. Sit here and just pretend I love you. I love everything about you. You're great I, small talk. I'll laugh at all your crap. I'll do whatever because I just want another bump, man. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, L.A. Lloyd, fine. Well, if you're 50 years old and doing blow, I feel sorry for you because that's probably like not that. a you smart know, I'm move. Not privy, you know, as a guy that never, you know, you guys were, you know, by the way, Drew programs music. Ugh. For these services, you know, these uh, not like the old days where you had a guy who was known as a music director sat around in an office and, you know, and worked with a program director and they decided what unique tunes that station would play. Hmm. But anyhow, you know, the thing about it is, is that uh, I'm, I'm right there with Drew there saying that there's no I don't know. I don't I'm not privy to all the sounds that are out there like you guys are. Uh, but I do agree that there's got to be all this stuff out there and you got to be able to play it all. You know, there's it's, you get so narrow that everything sounds the same, and everybody gets bored, and they turn it. You know, they 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 uh, turn it off. It's like yeah. going to a restaurant, and there's three things on the menu. I mean, my well, you God. know what? Like you think of the jack stations. They call them the jack stations in some markets. Sometimes they call them Bob. You know, it's just whatever. Sometimes it's Dave. We'll it, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, we'll play anything. But if you listen to those radio stations, that actually is a top forty radio station from like 1988. Yeah. They, yeah, because back in the '80s, they played everything like that. You know, now that's uh, way before you guys were. You know, most of you listening to this or watching this were born. But uh, yeah, I love the '80s. I, I thought that's the '80s was original, stations. man. That's I thought what, it was that's great. That's the way it was. I'm, I'm that's telling they, you, that's the way it was in the '70s. You know, I mean, because when I was started doing top forty radio, I could play Leonard Skinner's Saturday Night Special, and the next thing I'm going into a Temptations song. I'm, so I was playing R and B. I was playing kind of, you know, like country pop, straight pop, uh, disco. You know, you play Donna Summer, and then the next thing you know, you'd be playing uh, uh, The Police. 
You know, it was a little bit of everything, so it was nice having that variety. The difference was is that, you know, we'd also play a lot more songs, a lot more titles, uh, a lot more current things. Yeah. But that was back when, what, broadcasters were in control of, of, of radio stations, and uh, you had all these different owner-operators. You know how many, uh, owner oper- how many ownership groups you got in San Antonio? Market 28, four. Wow. Four. That's it, four. Wow. So that was back uh, that was back when you could smoke when you had a cigarette in the studio while you were You got it, man. Yeah. yeah. I always fire up my one hundreds because, you know, you get busy and they'd burn down. So you have to have a, <laughs> In fact I think I had like one sixties. I think they were like, you know, I'm too close to the camera. I think there are cigarettes about that long. Yeah. But, uh, and you used to have to put on Stairway to Heaven to go take a shit too, so because no, you didn't you put have computers. on Boss Gags loan me a dime. That's over ten minutes, dude. <laughs> hey, uh, you know what? That. Uh uh yeah, um, uh, Joe Walsh. Pretty much any Joe Walsh song is going to get you seven minutes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Wow, Sunset so, Grill. Any kind of Don Henley that's going to get you. You know, seven we don't minutes. say it enough, but but for those of us that have worked in radio for a long time, <laughs> we always feel your pain. Like I'd always tell people, and they're they're giving me crap about can't you play something new? And I said, look, every time these songs play on my show, I hear them. You don't always hear them yeah. when they're on, but I hear them every single time they play on my show. You think you're sick of it? I'm out of my mind sick. And, and if you complain, it's always the same thing. Oh, the jocks, they always complain about the music. Yeah. They always go, what do DJs know? They don't know anything about music. You know, I got some corporate asshole. He knows everything about music. Sure. DJs are always going to complain. Give them a t shirt and let them drive around in the van. That'll calm them down. <laughs> <laughs> right, all right, but it's the same thing. I mean, it's you know, it, it kill it. Nothing kills your love for music quicker than working in radio. Yeah, that's the reason why I never have to listen to music anymore because I got all this crap in my head. For all you aspiring oh. DJs who just graduated with a radio, TV, and film degree, right here. Now, the, Here's the your future, the man. Key. Here's your future. <laughs> the key is to just do it. Just do it in a format that you don't particularly care about. That way you can still have the music that you love, and you don't have to drive that into your own yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. Well, I knew but when you I... Could, like, you can go into some religious sort of top music. Board. I had my favorites, you know, and, and religious music. But you're right, it didn't kill, you know, it didn't kill my love for music. But uh, working in radio a bunch did, just because I had to listen to douche rock. Yeah. Well, and after a while, enough douche rock. Look, man, 20, year, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when all the hair bands started sounding exactly the same, kind of like where we are right now, um, it took the, that one song, Smells Like Teen Spirit, to kind of shake it up, start that grunge movie, and, and it'll happen again. I don't know what it's going to be, but it'll oh, happen wait, again. Wait a minute, though. The, the hair band movement didn't last that long. Uh, well, neither is this. Well, yeah, I guess... It yeah. didn't last that long, dude. Eight but years, even at the same, and but, even at the same time, there was the hair band movement. Rock radio was playing a lot of different, you know, types of acts. It wasn't just you know just douche rock, and that's it. Well, yeah, but so classic rock that we hear on the radio just, now. I mean, some of those songs are only ten years old at the time. I mean, a good Aerosmith or Boston or uh, Zeppelin or something like that. You know, was only about. Uh, 10 or 12 years old it wasn't that old now to me it's that it goes back to what you said being the dinosaur shit i mean if i hear Jimi hendrix on the radio i could you know i'll drive off the road i mean i, I respect the guy but i don't need to hear Jimi hendrix on the radio ever again if i wanted to hear it i'll listen to it on my ipod you know nirvana is a 22 year old song man i know I know. And it's, you yeah. know, it's, it's time. It's time for somebody to come and shake it up. But. Well, it's like this, you know, if you, if you look and, uh, you know, you look at that Zeppelin stuff that's 42 years old, 43 years old, you know, back in the, the 70s, we weren't playing stuff from the 30s. That's true. That's all I know. That's true. So, though I did play Mac the Knife on rock radio. So I, well, I they weren't playing the stuff from the 50s either back in the in the 80s, I mean. But now they are because there's been nothing else uh, after 1992, it seems like. I mean, after, let's, after uh, Grunge. Let's compare and contrast the unique sound of Rat with uh, White Lion. Yeah. Let's uh, <laughs> <laughs> pour some sugar on me. Why, you know, why? if you go from, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, you know come on. Well, right. Enough. Enough of that. I had to. I just had to rant because right. I just had I, that I'll give you. Yesterday. I'll give you the top ten right now on the latest rock countdown. Here they are. The Offspring is at number ten. They're back. Slash has a solo album. Number nine. Nickelback at with num- Minaj with number eight. What's her name? Number seven. Theory of a Dead Man, a band who sounds like Nickelback. Seether, and then we have Shine Down, which is 
probably one of my favorite bands. I'm sure you guys call them douche rock too, but I think they're awesome. Uh, Lincoln Park, Hailstorm, Chevelle, and then who's who's number one? Who's number one? You ready for this? From a soundtrack, Soundgarden. There you go. That's the state of rock in 2012. Aside from maybe Soundgarden, the rest of that stuff is what I call gym rock. Gym it's rock. What, it's what you listen to when you go to the gym. Okay. <laughs> well, what about? Wait a minute. And listen, no, and listen. I, I just want to say, gym rock. It's, it's all fine if that's what you want to listen to. I'm not ragging on anybody's, you know, musical interests. You listen to whatever you want to listen to. I'm that's just funny. saying that there's plenty of other you know, more progressive rock and roll out there that's getting fully ignored by radio stations. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, look, I don't want to get political here, but sometimes like like all these acts that you name, it's the same freaking acts. It's yeah. the same stuff. It's the tools did you, hear, did you the notice? Same. Did you notice when he was saying some of those acts, he was going uh, shine down, which sounds like Nickelback, which sounds like this, which no. sounds like Pearl Jam. Shine down no, does not sound like Nickelback. He was professing his love. Theory of Dead Man kind of reminds uh, me of Nickelback. Right, but not uh, not Shine Down. Not Shine Down. No. Professing his they're, love. For they're something. very uh, unique and have their own yeah. style. Yeah, he he and the family all get together on banjo night That's right. and uh, cover some Shine Down songs. Let me it's see if great. I have any text from Shine Down here. Thank yeah, you. you probably do. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> you've been sending all that love around. They've been on the Countdown show like uh, the most of anyone. Ah, uh, they're close. I think they're nine times see? now. See, I told you that. In the past 10 like years. Floyd. Well, that's about once a year on a new album, a new project. You're such that's a kinda... groupie, man. You, that's what you're a groupie. Not a groupie. I'm just yeah, friends, crazy, friends of the band, man, trying to help them out, trying to no, get them some I mean, love, man. Look, man, they gave me some fingerless gloves, all right? I mean, they're, they're great guys. <laughs> I love them. You know, they're great. Where else am yeah. I going to get my leather-studded wristband here? They gave me here. a douchebag. I love these guys. <laughs> they're great. You were crying like a bitch. <laughs> Hey, My uh, bitch. Uh, you were crying like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bitch. See, I can't. I'm not a professional like Drew. I God sh- smack. Hey, God smack is going to be on the show you this like week. like what you like, but I, I'm just telling you, sometimes it's like if Fox News was the only thing you got. I mean, it's just there it is. Over can, you see who the, can you see who the guest co-host God is? Smack. There? there you go. Hey, listen, man. Listen. <laughs> uh, listen. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm not saying that these are bad bands, okay? I'm just saying that that's the only thing that's being played or has been played on rock right. radio for a very long time. Yeah. And there so are people, other bands that, need, that deserve to be played. Right. So if you eat the same thing over and over and over again, you just tire of it. And there it is. You know, the brain needs a lot of different uh, stimuli. You need different sounds, you know, plus as a guy that admires musicianship. I mean, it's not you can't sit there and tell me who's the drummer in Shinedown because I love what he does. You know, he's such his a, name is the, uh, Barry Kirch. Barry well, of course, Kirch. because, you know, I mean, you know, all these guys like, uh, you know, autographed your ass, Lloyd. But well, that's true. But it's like <laughs> you can't tell me the, the bass player and whatever, because he's so good. You know, the rhythm section in this band is so good. And the you know what I'm saying? I mean, come on. I just the, just the, the visual of Lloyd bending over in a thong to get his ass. Uh, <laughs> hey, look, man. You got to hang. If I can't play a guitar, damn it, I'm going to hang out with him. I guess that's, that's the only thing I got going for me. Right. That's totally cool. I just, I'm just saying, can we can we play some shins and black keys in the, on the black same Black keys st- are on the countdown, dude. They're on there. I play them. All right. I'm, I'm trying to see where, where they're at on the countdown, but they're they're in, in uh, let's see, 1980. They're number 14. So there you go, playing uh, number fourteen. Number fourteen. LA Lloyd's Rock Thirty. That's it, man. Number, 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 number fourteen. Gold on the ceiling. Gold on the ceiling. There you go. The black keys on the countdown. Yeah. Yeah. All right, sorry, for, sorry for you know the whole thing. Yeah, the this is the band, state of but, rock uh, on Beaver Kool Aid. That's pretty much what the show's been today. Well, we've yeah, we've covered it before. Well, we talk. We try to talk about rock and roll. We try to talk about uh, you know. Uh, we, we've kind of gotten away from talking about family crap. We don't talk about that much. We talked I, about my dog. I still would like to do that. Yeah, that's that's what. But I like that when we talk about your bleeding dog and the fact that you don't know about mammals and the whole, you know, how it all works. And the, so let me ask you this. Whales have periods. Whales. Let me ask you this. Whales have periods. It all works the same, Lloyd. We're all, yeah. If we're mammals, we're mammals, dude. There you go. Right. Well. I mean, that's that's wouldn't that cause a shark frenzy in the water, though? All All right. So so if I type (laughs) if I go to if I go to Google and I type in do whales have 
Uh, do whales have period? Is the periods is the uh, eighth choice? So other people have asked. Other yeah. the the top ones are: Do whales have hair, teeth, belly buttons, tongues, ears, gills, dorsal fins, and then finally. Periods. <laughs> Periods. Right. This is great, man. When you're out smoking out with the uh, with shine down and you start talking about things like this. Dude, did you know that whales have a period? <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. Can you imagine the size of the tampon to shove up a whale pussy? Holy cow. That whale would be crying like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I hope my mother never watches so, so this show. So listen, the answer is the answer is no, no. Whales do not have periods. Well, there you go. See, Lyle is debunked already. Oh, well, there you go. That's the reason why I don't have a college degree. And I mean, of course, they don't have Drew knew the answer because Drew knows the answer to everything. <laughs> He's Drewcopedia. Drewcopedia. Yeah. And so, why don't whales have periods? Uh, well, a period, John, is the shedding of the lining of the womb, which thickens in preparation for pregnancy. And if an egg's fertilized, it embeds itself into yeah. uh, the side. And uh, so uh, there's your answer. They don't have, they don't have, well, they have a uterus, obviously. I don't know. Right, John? Well, let's put it this way: if they if they do have one, you know that the Japanese eat it. <laughs> you got that right. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, that's what they do. They find all these whales that are floating around there, and they've been de uh, Did uh, that's a new you topping know, on your pizza in there, Drew? Whale uterus. It, 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 it appears it appears that the short answer is that uh, the uh, what what uh, women uh, would shed. Uh, you know, after the period, uh, that is absorbed into the body in somebody, someone like someone like a whale. Oh, okay. Well, there All you right. go. So that it's makes still kind of happening, yeah. but it's a different process, right? Yeah. Is that what you're hearing? Just yeah. doesn't get released right. through the vag. True. So, so uh, technically, Japanese whale twat pie. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's going to sell a lot of food now, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Everybody wants a twat pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> twat pie. That's what we sell. Chicken twat pie. Uh, I love it. Chicken twat pie. <laughs> twat pie. Twat? No, sorry, man. It's a little different there. But uh, <laughs> hey, uh, uh, well, thank you all for yeah. being here. It's been sorry a great, great time. Extended. Happy yeah, Memorial Day weekend to you. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. I will go to your party and I will tear it up. Really? Beaver Kool Aid. Make it look a man. Get it hard. With Lyle, L.A. Lloyd, and Drew. So go ahead, stick your head up your ass. <laughs>